Hi guys, Olive here, here today to review two books on turtles. The first book I'll be reviewing in this video is called Dreaming in Turtle, a journey through the passion, profit, and peril of our most coveted prehistoric creatures by Peter Lawfer. This book was published in 2018 by St. Martin's Press, which is a part of Macmillan, and my hardcover copy that I purchased with my own money comes in at 304 pages. Dreaming in Turtle was written by a prolific independent journalist. List. He has been active for decades. He's been a correspondent for news networks. He's been a reporter for radio broadcasts. He's written for periodicals. He's made documentaries. And of course, he has written books. In fact, it seems like for a period of time between the late 2000s and early 2010s, he took a specific interest in nefarious activity surrounding animals. He wrote three books on that subject. And it seems like he might be kind of returning to to that topic now with his latest book. This is much less a natural history book than it is a fleshing out of the threats that turtles and tortoises face because of humans. And then on the flip side, it also details some of the efforts being undertaken in order to help protect them. I mean, for millions of years, the hard shells of these creatures have protected them from most threats, but we humans have blown right past those. And sometimes unintentionally, sometimes sometimes very intentionally, we are causing them harm and we are pushing a lot of species to the brink of extinction because of that. As one person in this book tells the author, we, meaning humans, are their biggest threat. Lawfer catalogs those threats throughout this book, talking to anyone who will talk to him, and that includes people from conservationists to chefs to smugglers to scientists. He talks to anyone who will give him an idea of why people would want to get their hands on these animals for good or bad reasons. He does very much show both sides of the spectrum, which is hard to read about sometimes. But he learned as he was talking to people just how powerful the Asian market is in motivating poachers both here in the United States and abroad. There is this belief, particularly in China, that because of a turtle's longevity, they are revered for their longevity. Many species can live well over 100 years. People believe that if you consume a part of the turtle as food or as medicine, then you too will be granted a long life. That is not something that I personally subscribe to, but this is something that people really believe. And so many turtles command high prices, particularly the rare ones. And then the rarer they get, the harder they are to get your hands on, the more it becomes a marker of status to be able to buy one, to be able to get your hands on one. And then that drives the demand up even further. It's not just in Asia, though. People eat turtle meat and turtle eggs all over the world. Their shells, have historically been used to manufacture different items like combs and guitar picks. Fun fact, before reading this book, I used to think that the word tortoise shell was just the name of a color pattern. I thought that was an adjective for a specific coloring that is used. But no, it comes from the fact that things at least used to be made out of tortoise shell. And turtles face a lot of other threats too. In some cultures, there's such a thing as turtle sacrifice. We hear about that in this book, where people believe that sacrificing a turtle will cure a certain ailment of yours. And then there are, of course, course, the environmental impacts that they face, things like climate change, the oil industry, since a lot of these turtles live in water, and then most frequently of all, car impacts. Turtles are also removed from the wild to become pets, which is how I know a lot of us first come into contact with turtles. People have found over the years that they make pretty good pets. They're very cute. They're fairly easy to care for. They live a very long time, and they just have that charisma that Rebecca Giggs talks about in her book called Fathoms. It's a great book. I reviewed it here on my channel if you want to check out that review. People just tend to love turtles. And as Peter Lawfer says many times throughout Dreaming in Turtle, everyone seems to have a turtle story. And that also includes me. When I was a little girl, I found a three-legged turtle who then I took in. I named her Shelly. And I cared for her until eventually she ran away. 
I wish that was a joke. But Lawfer experienced having a turtle too. One person he spoke to for research actually suggested that he try living with a turtle. And because having one would help him get more up close and personal with this subject, he decided to adopt one who he named Fred. And stories of Lawfer's life with Fred, fretting over him, trying to understand him, and then just enjoying his company serve as interludes and frankly, necessary respites from all of the terrible things happening to turtles throughout this book. And you will need those periodic breaks from all of this reporting too, because it is really sad stuff. There are nicer moments when Peter Lover is talking to people who are very passionate about helping the turtles, and that takes a little bit of the edge off. But in this author's attempts to be, I guess, as forthcoming as possible, to paint as clear of a picture as possible about what is really going on out there without any attempts to sugarcoat it, it gets pretty bleak at times. I'm not going to lie to you. And that's why I think this book's cover and the title, frankly, are rather misleading. I mean, it has a very dreamy title. And then the cover is this calming, beautiful watercolor, which I think gives the impression that this is going to be a more relaxing, perhaps even philosophical read, instead of the rundown on wildlife crime involving turtles that it actually is. But for what this author set out to do, which was obviously talk about that wildlife crime, I think he was fairly successful. The marketing of this book aside, I do think it's a pretty successful book. I now have a very clear picture of the threats that turtles face. It was not easy reading, but I'm glad I know what those things are. And this author's long history as a journalist definitely came through when he was talking about the different interactions he had with people who he spoke to for this book, more so than in any other nonfiction book I have ever read. I feel like I know what it was like for him to research this book because he is so good at bringing us readers in to the conversations that he had with these people. I felt like I was standing right there next to him. So this is a book I recommend, just not if you're looking for a feel-good read and not if you're just looking to read a whole laundry list of facts about turtles. I mean, there are turtle facts in this book. You will learn about turtles as you go along, but the focus of this book is much more about the illicit activities surrounding turtles, or even just deleterious actions that go on to affect turtles. So think books like The Falcon Thief by Joshua Hammer, or The Dragon Behind the Glass by Emily Voigt. More wildlife crime than wildlife facts. But if you're looking for something different, potentially something more uplifting, especially if you're like me and you need a balm after being emotionally devastated by dreaming in turtle, then look no further than the new book from Cy Montgomery called Of Time and Turtles, Mending the World Shell by Shattered Shell. This book was published in 2023 by Mariner Books, which is an imprint of HarperCollins. I read an e-copy that I checked out from my library, but the hardcover copy, weirdly, also comes in at 304 pages, just like Dreaming in Turtle. Reading this book was not only soothing to read after having just read Dreaming in Turtle, but it honestly felt like a very logical follow-up because this book shows people, the author included, attempting to help turtles, trying to save them because they are facing all the threats expounded upon in the previous book. Like most of Cy Montgomery's books, Of Time and Turtle blends natural history and memoir. Montgomery and the illustrator of this book Book, Matt Patterson spent about half a year beginning in the spring of 2020 volunteering at the Turtle Rescue League in Massachusetts. And in this book, we learn all about what that stint was like. We meet the people who work there, including the founders, Alexia and Natasha, but then also the other unique, dedicated and patient individuals who find helping turtles so rewarding, especially because they are threatened in today's world. We hear about the work that everyone does. And then by extension, we find out what Cy and Matt helped out with. Things like caring for the rescues, breeding turtles, which involves the very delicate process of incubating eggs, releasing turtles, sometimes those baby turtles, but then other times rehabilitated adults back into the wild, protecting wild nests during nesting season, and so much more. In fact, at one point in the book, Cy and Matt gave a very special snapping turtle who they really 
really bonded with physical therapy for a period of time. That turtle was named Fire Chief, and he is just one of many turtles who you will come to know as you read this book, all of whom were treated as individuals by the people working at the Turtle Rescue League, also called TRL, which is an abbreviation that will always make me, as someone who went through adolescence in the mid-2000s, extremely happy. The people who work there are incredible and so necessary. We hear, sadly, just how busy they are in this book, when something bad happens to a turtle, particularly in the greater Massachusetts area, they get a phone call. Turtles getting chewed on by dogs. Turtles very frequently getting hit by cars. There was even one they cared for that's discussed in this book that was pierced by a crossbow arrow. Turtles are very resilient and they have remarkable healing powers. And between that and the dedication of the people working at the Turtle Rescue League, there are many happy endings within this book. Turtles were saved who would have most certainly died without the intervention. And then they go on to breed and make new turtles that will keep the species going for many years to come. But just because this is a more uplifting read than Dreaming in Turtle, it does not mean that there are not heartbreaks to be found within this book. There certainly are. Even with everyone's efforts, some turtles just don't make it, or they take a turn for the worse after initially recovering from something terrible. And I would argue that that actually hits harder in this book because these are turtles who we've come to know, that we've come to like, we get to know their personalities, and we also get to know the people working at TRL, people who are administering their care. So we see how devastating it is for them to lose these turtles, and we feel it as readers too. It's never overwrought, though, as it never is in Cy Montgomery books, because she puts so much heart into everything she does. She put it into the experience, she put it into writing this book, and she comes from such an authentic place. And you can really feel that as you go through this book, because she even brings us into the deeper thoughts that this experience brought to mind for her. And the central theme of all of those thoughts was the concept of time, which is not surprising at all, considering that turtles are such long-lived creatures. Right at the start of this book, Cy Montgomery talks about how she's felt like throughout her life, she's always been warring with time. There's never enough of it. It goes by way too fast. But a turtle has all the time in the world. And so there was a part of her that hoped by working with these very leisurely creatures, by going on what she liked to call turtle time, that they would show her the path to wisdom and help her make her peace with time. And so periodically throughout this book, Cy Montgomery comes back to this topic and explores it in different ways. What consciousness is to her previous book, The Soul of an Octopus, is what time is to of time and turtles. And so I have to say about this book, I think both the title and this book's cover are very accurate, very representative of what this book actually has to offer. I'm not sure any other book that Cy Montgomery writes will ever come close to the way I feel about The Soul of an Octopus. That book hit me so hard when I first read it. I still think about it. It is still one of my favorite nonfiction books. Even after having read a heap of nonfiction books since then, it remains one of my favorites. That book is so special. But honestly, so is Of Time and Turtles. This is also one that I gave five stars, even if I don't love it quite as much as The Soul of an Octopus. It's beautiful, and it's written in an incredibly compassionate way. The topic of compassion even comes up during it. And this is a book that will comfort you even during the sad moments. I think maybe part of the reason I didn't love this one quite as much as I love The Soul of an Octopus is because Cy Montgomery began helping out at TRL right at the beginning of the pandemic. So of course, that is discussed within this book, how they as a team dealt with it, how it went on to affect some of the work that they did. And I have found just as a reader that generally I don't enjoy books that discuss the pandemic. Many books have come out that were written during that very tumultuous time period. It's a time period that I really don't like to revisit. It was a very insular, very scary time. I don't like to go back there mentally for many different reasons. One of them being that I just don't know how much more can be said about it. 
but I didn't mind it quite as much in this book's case because it did relate back to that central theme of time. Time during the pandemic moved very differently, and even since then, it seems like many of our perceptions of time have shifted. While this isn't a straight natural history book that will give you a bundle of turtle facts right in your lap, you will also, just like in Dreaming in Turtle, learn a lot about turtles as you go along. But even more than that, you will learn about these turtles as individuals. You will get to know them. And you will also get to know the team of people dedicated to helping them. If you also want to help them, Cy Montgomery provided a list of resources that you can use right at the back of the book, which I thought was a great inclusion. This is just yet another gem from Cy Montgomery. It is heartwarming enough to make you forget that you were sad just a moment ago. When it comes to how these two books compare, of course, there is some overlap between them since they both are about turtles. A few of the same stories are repeated. I thought it was really interesting that both of them commented upon the unspoken communication between humans and turtles. One of the rescuers of In Time and Turtles actually says, there's something about their eyes. And I would say that both of these books provide a realistic picture of what's going on out there while still holding on to hope there are a lot of sad moments. There is a lot of death to be found in both of these books. You will need your own hard shell to take them on, but the good moments make it worth it. Dreaming in Turtle is written like a journalist wrote it. It is a lot more detached, even if this author did attempt to up the cute factor by including stories of his own turtle, but it is a lot more informative on a global scale. And then of Time and Turtles, on the other hand, it's a lot more personal. It brings a lot more heart, as Cy Montgomery tends to do, but then it is more local, it's more narrow in scope, and it appeals to emotion much more than logic. Just two very different strategies, both intending to show the plight of turtles. Ultimately, I did find Cy Montgomery's book to be a little bit more effective because she was so much more personally invested in what she was writing about. And I thought Peter Lawford's book could have used a little bit more of that. I needed him to be more invested than just, I have a turtle at home, so that's why I care about this. I needed to feel like he cared. But I'm not sorry I read either one of these. I took away a lot from both of them, and I'm really glad I read them back to back in the order in which I did so. Like I said, if you're interested in reading both of these books, start with Dreaming in Turtle, because of Time in Turtles is really lovely, and it will take some of that sting away. But those were my thoughts on these two books on turtles. If you are interested in reading either or both, or even if you have read either or both, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. Also, let's see if Peter Lawfer was right when he made his assertion in Dreaming in Turtle that all of us have a turtle story. Drop yours in the comments. I am dying to know what those are. And if you're interested in getting your hands on copies of either of these books, I've put links to where you can do so down in the description box below. They are there for your clicking convenience. Also in the description box, I've included something that I like to call the further reading section, where I've listed out some book titles you might want to check out if this topic is interests you. And then at the very bottom of that exact same description box, you'll see links to everywhere you can find me around the internet. Goodreads, Instagram, The Story Graph, all the places I'm the most active in case you want to keep up with what I'm reading and what I'm doing right now. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.